Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. I've made a lot of choices in my life that have led me to where I am now, many of them considered crazy either by me or by other, other people. But they've led me to where I am now and who I am now. And Denise already told you a little bit of that, but some of that is model, dancer, mechanical engineering student, and team lead of the Waterloo Formula Motorsports team. One of my goals is to change the stereotype of what a female engineer looks like. In fact, I met someone just the other day who works on deciding, or not deciding, I guess, but looking into why girls do and don't study or pursue studies in fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. And when I said I was a third year mechanical engineering student, she looked at me and said, huh, really? That's unusual. So even people that are trying to change the stereotype are helping enforce the stereotype. So um, just a little tidbit to show you that people do look at me like I'm crazy on a regular basis. And so I guess that's kind of enforcing the uh, title and the theme of my talk. So let's take a moment and picture crazy. What comes to mind? Well, what comes to my mind is the MotoGP rider going full out on the corner, full speed ahead, leaning their bike, scraping their knee on the ground, and going full out to get what they want, which is the race win. Now, making a crazy choice is similar in the sense that you have to take that risk to gain what you want, what you desire. Now, what does taking that risk mean for you? It might be a job opportunity, it might be a trip, it might be doing something that you wouldn't normally do. What does taking that risk mean for you? To tell you about my crazy choices, and how they've led me to where I am now. I'm gonna take you back to high school when I was deciding what I was gonna pursue, what I was gonna study. I was seen as the complete girly girl. I did 10 years of competitive dance. I was a cosmetician. I, I was already working on my shoe collection and um, still growing, obviously. <laughs> and I told all my teachers and friends that I was gonna pursue mechanical engineering and they all looked at me like I was crazy, and they, they still kind of do. And I guess what some of them knew and some of them didn't was not only did I love science and math, um, I also loved workshop class where I got to use machinery, use tools. I got to design things and go and make them myself, and I thought that was the coolest thing, and that is why I chose mechanical engineering. So to me, it wasn't so crazy. It all kind of fit together and made sense. The summer before university, something happened. It was great. I went to a race. I had the opportunity to go to Mostport and watch an American Le Mans race. Now, something happened with, to me. I fell in love with racing. I just love the sound, the smell, the atmosphere, just being so close to these cars going by. They look beautiful. They sound cool. It's just awesome. And I fell in love with racing. And if we refer back to Amy's speech earlier about listening to your DNA and your calling, and that, that was a moment for me that I decided to follow my passion, racing, and I've been heading in that direction ever since. When I came to university, I found this perfect team, a team that designs and builds race cars from the ground up and then competes against other universities from around the world. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever, but there was a problem. It was a really big team, and they were all men. They were all male, and I was extremely, extremely intimidated. They talked like they knew everything about cars. I mean, I knew I was interested, but I, didn't know, I couldn't talk technically about the cars whatsoever. And so I was intimidated. I stood in the sidelines, and I didn't join the team thinking, you know, that's crazy. I can't join. That's crazy. It's almost cliche to say, but it took a near-death experience for me to learn an important lesson. I contracted a rare virus which caused meningitis and presented itself in the form of what seemed like strokes. So the excruciating headaches, the partial body paralysis, the speech impediment, and um, it, it was physical torture and pain for me. It was mental torture for my friends and family and really scary for everyone to go through because the doctors didn't know what I had for over a week and they told my parents to prepare for the worst. For, 
for eventual possible death. And luckily, I had a coworker at the time come and visit me in the hospital, and he inspired me to create a bucket list. So I did, and luckily I left that hospital with my life. I, I fought it off. The doctors are still confused as to how I made it, but I did. And I left the hospital with my life and that bucket list. But that bucket list represented the opportunities that I was going to take from that point forward. So I decided I was going to approach life like the motorcycle. I was going to scrape my knee on the ground. I was going to go all out and just do whatever life throws at me and just, just go for it. So things like the cliche skydiving, right? But also things like I got to co-drive for Crazy Leo, one of Canada's um, Canadian Rally Championship driver. It was just really cool to co-drive for him. Um, I got to be a flag girl for one of my favorite racing teams, the Flying Lizards. I got to travel London, Paris, Germany. I even got to, to meet the uh, first female engineer to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans. So that was pretty incredible. That's Lena Gate. And as Denise men mentioned, or as she said, fan of NASCAR, that's not exactly how I would say it. I work for NASCAR um, as an official this past summer, which is an exciting opportunity that I definitely jumped on. And bringing you back to my story, I returned to school and I joined the formula team. So that, that was wonderful. Like that crazy choice, of course, didn't seem so crazy anymore because I was like, I'm doing it, I don't care. So, and, and I mean, people, people, I guess, were grateful that I did or were supportive that I did and definitely didn't treat me any different. I was one of the guys and it was great. I got to help build the car, I got to go to competition, I got to really be part of the team. Even a few months into, into my time with the team, there was a fourth year designer that couldn't complete his duties as chassis designer. And we had no one to pick up the slack. So here I was, my second year, only girl on the team, still new to all this, really, you know, f a few months before, I didn't know what a chassis even was. And I said, you know what, hey, I'll do it. I'll do it, I'll take it on. So that was definitely crazy. Uh, but I did it anyways. I learned all the programs that I needed to learn. And I figured it out and I made it work. I worked long nights. And, you know, whether people saw me working or not, and I, that definitely helped validate that I was in the right field. I was making it work for me. I was making engineering work together with my passion, my newfound passion for racing. And I knew I was headed in the right direction. So that, that's something, uh, a crazy choice, I'm proud to say I made. So just as everything is going great, uh, you know, school-wise, I've figured it all out. It's all coming together. I learned that you can't control everything that happens in your life. For me, that can be described as this photo. I, at the time, was very happy, you know, engineering and racing, it's all going great. But there's a part of me that's missing. I wasn't, I wasn't completely as feminine as I used to be. So I started dancing again and I found modeling. And, you know, that every, to me that fit. I am those two people in one. It just all works for me. So I had planned a photo shoot for outdoors, and of course the Canadian winter did not agree, so I brought the photo shoot indoors and to a building that was familiar, which of course is an engineering building. And the car was there and the photo was taken, it wasn't planned, it wasn't to be released, it wasn't part of the original um, photo shoot plans. But it did get taken, and well that was how it was taken essentially. But when I look at this photo, I see my femininity and my passion for race cars, the two key things that identify who I am. But unfortunately, to the outside perspective, it's just another model with a race car. And that's an image that the university clearly does not want to promote, and I can't blame them. I said before that you can't control everything that happens in your life. But you can control the lessons that you learn and how you decide to move forward afterwards. The important lesson I learned was the power of perspectives, the ability to put myself in someone else's shoes and look at a situation for how they see it, not just how I see it. Now that's an important lesson I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. I also learned a lot of important lessons about myself. I guess I forgot to tell you. The formula team was suspended, unable to compete at competition, 
that season. I withdrew from my studies and I hit rock bottom. That was kind of an important thing to tell you. And anywho, I did return to my studies. I decided to face my fears. And that was the most terrifying feeling. I, I don't wish it upon anyone, but I had to return to my studies. I had to return and face the team that had been that had gone through this this turmoil of suspension. I had to work with the people responsible for the team and my punishment every day. I had to face people pointing and staring and saying, "Look, that's her." Uh, I might be exaggerating a little bit on the last part, but it really honestly felt like it. And it's it was the worst thing to go through and it was it was just it was dreadful. But luckily there were friends family, and key faculty members that really helped me keep my head up high, face my fears, and take it all one day at a time. I ended up designing another chassis for the formula team, now becoming team lead, and definitely continuing to, to take my motto of taking those risks. So I choose crazy. I have been, and I still will. I accept that the good and the bad and the ugly is going to come along with it, but I still choose crazy. Now my question to you is, will you cruise through life, missing opportunity, missing those chances, just taking her easy, or will you take those risks? Will you take that chance? Will you scrape your knee on the ground and take those risks to take you, take yourself where you want to be? Thank you.